Hello, Matt with Lean Stacks, and welcome back to another episode in the Lean Stacks Technology Education Series. In this episode, we'll demonstrate how to upgrade the Greeting Web Services project from Spring Boot 1.3 to 1.4. This episode builds on previous episodes in the Spring Boot Fundamentals series. If you haven't had an opportunity to watch them, I encourage you to take a look on the Lean Stacks YouTube channel. The source code illustrated in this episode may be found in the LeanStacks GitHub repositories. See this episode's description for more information and URLs. Let's get started. I've opened the Greeting Web Services application in the Spring Tool Suite. Begin by opening the Maven POM XML file. Within the parent POM block, change the version of the Spring Boot to 1.4.0.release and save the file. The parent POM describes the version numbers for most of the application dependencies. By simply upgrading the parent POM, most of the Greeting Web Services dependency versions will automatically be upgraded. There's one exception, however, and we'll address that in just a moment. Next, open the Gradle build file, which is named build.gradle. In the Build Script Dependencies block, change the version of the Spring Boot Gradle plugin to version 1.4.0.release. Similar to the Maven parent POM, the Spring Boot Gradle plugin supplies the version numbers for the majority of the application's dependencies. Spring Boot 1.4.0 incorporates a major upgrade of the Hibernate ORM framework, moving from version 4.3 to 5.0. The Spring Boot framework manages most of the integration changes without impacting developers. However, we need to make a few changes to the Greeting Web Services project to transition to Hibernate 5.0. First, Open the Jadira dependency version in both the Maven POM and the Gradle build files. We need to transition from version 4.0.0 to 5.0.0 because version 5.0.0 of the Jadira dependency integrates with the Hibernate ORM version 5.0 API. Next, we need to change the Hibernate naming strategy implementation class. This class maps table and column names to persistent entity class and attribute names. In the Spring Tool Suite, navigate to the Source Main Resources config directory and open the Application Properties file. Locate the property key named Strategy. This key name has been deprecated and the new implementation class has been introduced. Replace the property key value pair with Spring JPA naming physical strategy and the new implementation class named physical naming strategy standard impl. The database connection pool configuration has been reorganized in Spring Boot 1.4.0. The, properties key, the property keys now reflect the specific connection pool implementation. While the Greeting Web Services application illustrated in the Spring Boot Fundamental series does not utilize a database connection pool, the Skeleton Spring Boot project offered by LeanStacks does. And if you look at that GitHub repository, you'll see that the third node of the Spring Data Source Connection Pool configuration properties now include the implementation class, which is Tomcat. As you see illustrated here, Spring Boot 1.4.0 Data Source Connection Pool properties now have a third node containing the implementation class. It's also worth noting if you connect to MySQL that there is a new version of the MySQL driver included with Spring Boot 1.4.0. If you connect to a MySQL database but do not use SSL for that connection, you may want to consider adding the use SSL equals false attribute to your Spring Data Source URL configuration property. 
Spring Boot 1.4.0 deprecates the use of the Guava Cache Manager in favor of the Caffeine Cache Manager. Support for Guava Cache Manager will be removed completely in a future release of Spring Boot. The Caffeine Cache Manager is a variant of the Guava Cache Manager which has been optimized for Java 1.8. Let's replace the Guava Cache Manager implementation with Caffeine. Return to the Maven Palm and the Gradle build files and add the dependency for Caffeine. Remember the version number may be omitted from both the Palm and the Gradle build files because the dependency is part of the Spring Boot Bill of Materials. The latest compatible version of the Caffeine library will automatically be included. Next, open the Application Java class. Remove the Bean declaration for the Guava Cache Manager. For the Greeting Web Services application, there's no need to explicitly declare a Caffeine Cache Manager bean. Spring Boot detects the Caffeine library on the class path and adds the Caffeine Cache Manager bean to the application context when the application is started. Now let's return to the Application Properties file. Add basic configuration for the Caffeine Cache Manager. The first property, spring.cache.cache_names, declares a list of caches to be managed by Caffeine. The second property, spring cache caffeine spec, instruments the cafe Caffeine caches with size and time-based expiration policies. If you wish to declare cache-specific policies, you can wire up the beans in your application Java class. We configure the maximum cache size to be 250 items. Once the maximum size is reached, the least recently accessed items are evicted first. Furthermore, we expire items from the cache if they've not been accessed in 600 seconds or 10 minutes. The Info Contributor interface is introduced in Spring Boot 1.4.0 and may be used to supply data to be returned by the Actuator Info Endpoint. There are a couple out-of-the-box implementations included in Spring Boot 1.4.0 to capture Git and build information. Let's update the Greeting Web Services project to expose dynamically generated build information from Maven and Gradle. First, let's remove the hard-coded info endpoint properties in the application.properties file. Next, return to the maven-pom.xml file. Update the Spring Boot Maven plugin to include the build info execution goal. This goal will be invoked for each Maven build and produces the build-info properties file. The actuator build info contributor implementation class reads the values from this file and returns them when the info endpoint is called. Now let's configure Gradle builds to produce the build info properties file. Open the Gradle build file and add the Spring Boot DSL block with a call to the build info method. The Spring test framework has been updated significantly. 
The changes are so extensive that LeanStacks is producing an episode dedicated to the test framework enhancements. In this episode, let's update the Greeting Web Services test classes to ensure that they're compatible with Spring Boot 1.4.0. In the Spring Tool Suite, open the Abstract test class uh, within the test source directory structure. Begin by replacing the Spring Application Configuration Annotation with the new annotation named Spring Boot Test. The Spring Boot Test annotation is now used to bootstrap all tests. Within the Run With class, replace the Runner class with a new runner named simply Spring Runner. That's it! Those are the only changes required to make the Greeting Web Services project compatible with the test framework enhancements. There are several specializations of the new Spring Boot test annotation, and also a simplified way to incorporate Makito mocks and spies into the tests. We'll cover all this and more in the soon-to-be-published LeanStacks episode on the new Spring Test Framework. Let's run the unit test to ensure the changes to the Spring Boot test framework are working properly. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type dot forward slash Gradle W and press enter to run the default Gradle tasks. For our project, those tasks are clean and build. As you can see, there were no test errors reported in the console logs. Let's open a browser and view the Gradle Build dashboard. Let me refresh my page, and now let's look at those test results. All of our project reports generated, and each report is showing that all tests have passed. Now let's illustrate the same thing, but use Maven to build the project and run our unit tests. Once again, we see within our console logs that all of our tests have passed using the new test framework. Next, let's run the application to see the changes for the Spring Boot 1.4.0 upgrade. Open the terminal window again, and this time type dot slash Gradle W boot run and press enter to start the embedded Apache Tomcat web server on port 8080. I'll use the Postman RESTful web service client to execute the RESTful web services within our project. I'm going to systematically run both the fetching RESTful web service endpoints as well as the POST to create a new greeting, the PUT to update the greeting, and the delete to remove one of the greetings from our collection. Finally, let's look at the new actuator info endpoint. Notice it returns the build info properties that we configured within our application. These property values are automatically produced by the Gradle or Maven build. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Click the thumbs up button below to let us know. Not a subscriber yet? 
Click the subscribe button below to get the latest episodes from the Lean Stacks YouTube channel. As always, you can find more information on LeanStacks.com. To view the complete repository illustrated in this episode, see the LeanStacks GitHub repository URL in this episode's description.